let's have a look at flexible cables. I've chosen four common types of cable we use. We'll have a look where we use the different types of cable and also at what these numbers and letters mean, printed or embossed on the side of every cable. So this cable here is HO7RNF and it goes on to say 3G 1.5 mm squared, VDE, and then we've got the manufacturer's name. The 3G 1.5 mm squared, that means there's three cores and each cord is 1.5 mm squared. The G means that one of the cores is green and yellow, and your CPC. If it had an X, it means there's no dedicated green and yellow CPC within the cable. So what do these numbers and letters mean? Well, H means it conforms to harmonized standards. The O7 identifies that the voltage rating of this cable is 450-750 volts. We'll come back to that. R identifies that the insulation is EPR, ethylene propylene rubber. N identifies that the outer sheet is PCP, polychloroprene. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. And F tells us that the conductors are flexible, class 5. Conductors come in various classes. Flexible conductors are class 5. You can see the different designations for cable class here. As mentioned, the F in the cable stands for flexible where you've got lots of little strands of copper, hence making the cable flexible. We mentioned that O7 identifies the voltage rating of the cable. In this case, it's 450-750 volts. Now, why the two voltages? The first voltage rating is phase to earth or phase to neutral, and the second voltage rating is phase to phase. In AC systems, the rated voltage of a cable shall be at least equal to the nominal voltage of the system for which it's intended. And generally, we have single or three-phase systems. Anyhow, so HO7RNF is a heavy-duty rubber flexible trailing cable. We often see it used in temporary power installations, outdoor events. It's also used in industry and commercial and kitchens and such. You'll see it on heavy-duty catering equipment. Here we have another cable. This cable's code is HO5RNF. This cable is 2 times 1 mm squared. This is actually cable to some LED lights for gardens. You'll notice there's no CPC in this. Let's have a look at the code. It's very similar to the HO7. The only difference is this is HO5RNF. And the O5 identifies that the voltage rating is 300 to 500 volts. And it's classed as a light duty rubber flexible cable. The insulation is EPR and the outer sheath is PCP. The conductors are flexible and it conforms to harmonized standards. You can also get this in smaller cross sectional areas, often used for outdoor lighting, smaller appliances. Right, here's another very common flexible cable. This one's still got its plug on it. And this is HO3VVH2F. This type of cable is very common in domestic, all our electrical appliances, extension leads. Again, H means it's conform to harmonized standards. O3 identifies that the voltage rating is 300-300 volts. The V identifies that the insulation is PVC, and the V also identifies that the outer sheath is PVC. So V basically means the substance is PVC. And again, the conductors are class 5. Now on the cable just seen, it also had H2. And H2 means it's a flat cable, non-separable. It's a two-core cable, live and neutral. So it'll be used for class 2 type appliances because there's no CPC. Here we have another PVC cable. This time it's HO5VVF. It's quite tricky to see. You can tell it's PVC because it's embossed. They can't emboss into the HO7RN because that's a rubber. The code is always printed on them, but it actually looks like HOS. As far as I'm aware, there's no HOS, so it must be HO5. So we know that H is harmonized. O5 is 300-500 volts. We know that V stands for PVC. It's VV, so the outer sheath and the inner insulation is PVC. Right, this is the cable from a two-port valve. Its code is O5V2V2-F. Notice there's no H. 
The voltage rating is 300-500, so we know that's 05. Now we've got V2, V2. We've got a clue here, 90 degrees C. That's right. So this is heat resistant PVC cable. So the insulation and the outer flex is heat resistant 90 degrees C. And the conductors, all five of them, are flexible. I'm not sure why there's no H conforms to harmonized standards. The valve was made in the EU. Don't know if the cable came from elsewhere. It's also got the American standards on the cable. If anybody knows, pop it in the comments. Thank you. Often used for connecting up storage heaters, immersion heaters, any environments where there might be additional heat. Just a little bit more on cable class. Class 1 is solid. Class 2 is stranded. Class 5 is flexible. That's what we've been looking at. And class 6 is flexible greater than class 5. You can get round cables with solid conductors. An example being NYYJ. It's a type of cable that has a very tough outer sheath. You'll notice this is N, not H. This is aligned to VDE standards, which is German. It's a regional standard. And they also use a different letter for PVC insulated. They use Y, where the harmonized standard is V for PVC. And J contains a green and yellow core. When in the harmonized standard, it was G. So you do get different regional standards as well, which is something to be aware of. In industry, you can get solid cables up to very large sizes. We've got solid cable in Twin and Earth, haven't we? Up to 2.5 millimeters. You'll notice anything larger than 2.5 millimeters in Twin and Earth will then go to stranded. Stranded is also the type of cable you get in SWA. It makes the cable easier to bend than solid, but it wouldn't be classed as a flexible cable, and you'll have different installation methods. Flexible is a trailing cable. In solid is generally fixed or buried, but obviously you've got to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Here we've got some tails, 6181Y. These are known as flexi tails, but it's stranded cable. There's two types here. One has got 19 strands. The other has seven strands. The 19 strand, the blue cable, is an awful lot easier to work with. An example of class 6, flexible greater than class 5, could be the cable used for RCBOs. This is the neutral lead. Sometimes this is very, very fine. The ends are often compressed, so it's solid. But if you want to shorten the lead, this very, very fine stranded copper needs a ferrule on it because it's so fragile. Well, that was just a quick look at some common types of flexible cable we use. I hope you found it useful. And thanks very much for watching.